Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday prayer meeting. Before we start, may I request everyone to please stand. And before we start, I, I would like to call Brother John Ray Gutierrez to lead us in our opening prayer. Let's pray po. Di ka, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord. Panginoon, marami salamat po, Panginoon, sa uh, pagkakataong ito, Lord, Panginoon, na uh, dinala niyo uli kami dito sa, sa bahay simbahan, Panginoon, upang sambahin ka, Panginoon. And we pray, Lord, Panginoon, sa service namin, Panginoon, na uh, uh, ikaw po sana ang manguna, Panginoon, ngayong, ano, ngayong service po namin, Panginoon. And we pray, Lord, Panginoon, sa iba po po namin gagawin, Lord, in Jesus, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our first song, Blessed Be the Name. Please get your hymn books and turn to hymn number 357. 357, we will sing the song, Blessed Be the Name. On the first verse, ready, sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. He breaks the power of canceled sin, blessed be the name of the Lord. His blood can make the foulest clean, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Good evening and welcome to our prayer meeting. And this is a time that we gather together and, and lay our hearts before the Lord and before our brethren and also share our thanksgiving. Okay, so sa mga uh, thanksgiving po items natin, sino po ang mayroong unang sasabihin po ng uh, pasasalamat para, uh, para po sa ating Panginoon. Sino po ang may mga testimonies or mga um, uh, blessings na natanggap. Uh, so, mayroon po. So, isa pong pagpasalamat natin, ilinagay po dito sa ating prayer request. Uh, last Sunday, we have six person who follow the Lord in baptism. Okay, so we're happy that uh, for those six person, at alam ko po na mayroon pang iba na gusto mag- uh, join sa ating church and we need to talk to them uh, before they would uh, they would uh, come and join us by baptism. We want to make sure that they have a profession of faith. But thank, thank God sa mga taong ito, ang iba na, na dito po ay nakausap po nakausap ko po personal at ang iba naman ay nakausap din ng mga staff po natin and who really followed them up. So, okay, so uh, that is a good uh, testimony. Okay, sino pa po ang may mga, uh, mga blessings na gusto pong ma-share? Okay, kung wala na, doon tayo punta sa mga request. Bago natin basahin po yung dito sa mga uh, prayer list po natin. Sino po ang may mga nais pong i i dalhin sa Panginoon ng mga panalangin na gustong malaman ninyo nam namin at iba pang mga kapatiran? Any burdens that you would like to unload before the Lord na at sa brethren na gusto nating pasalamatan ay idulog.
Okay, see, see si Brother Patrick. Gusto ko po siya na ipag-pray po. Pray, ipag-pray ko po sa ano. Eastern Cantata po namin na mas marami pa po sanang maka-join po sa Eastern Cantata po namin kumpara po nung December. Okay. So this is a good thing na may mga makakaroon po tayo ng Cantata this coming Palm Sunday. So that would be on April 2. So, ipanalangin po natin na maraming mga bata ang makakilala sa Panginoon kasi mga bata ang magpe-perform, mag po tayo ng mga bata. At ganun din, na, dapat nalagay po namin dito sa, sa prayer request din yung mga, yung adult choir on April, April 9. So, let's um, uh, add that to our prayer, personal prayer request. Pakisulat na lamang po. Okay? So, uh, ano pa po? Sino pa ang may mga nais uh, uh, idagdag sa prayer list natin, sa prayer request? Well, kung wala na, tuloy po, tuloy po natin ipanalangin yung nandi dito sa ating prayer request. So, I would like to, to uh, for us to go to the cancer patient section. Uh, si Sarina Bilyesa po dito ay nasa hospital po. Dinalaw po namin ito ni, ni Brother Al Jade at ni Sister, uh, Sister Merlin po. Uh, at nakausap po namin ang mga kapatid niya doon sa hospital. So, si stage 4 cancer at uh, ipanalangin po natin na um, loobin ng Panginoon na po siya ay uh, gumaling. And we were able to talk to the family doon sa hospital na yun. Please pray for her, Sarina Bilyesa Kalma. And uh, she needs our prayer and she requests for, uh, that we as a church continue to pray for her. Okay? So, ganun din po yung mga nandito sa ating listahan. Continue to um, have them in prayer. And I would like to focus our attention also dito ki Dr. Palit Ang is scheduled for open heart surgery this coming April 26 sa uh, uh, Philippine, Philippine Heart Center. So, uh, Si dito rin sa bago sa atin uh, prayer request is Richie Humawan, uh, recovery from heart problem. So continue to uphold him in our prayer at ang magtitake ng board exam uh, this Sunday po. Ang iba po dito ay civil service exam at iba pong mga licensure exams in the, sa this coming April and May na dito po sa ating listahan. So kung wala na po kayong mga request, uh, Get your prayer partners and let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity wherein we could approach your throne of grace. And uh, Lord, we first we praise you, O God, for who you are. Lord, truly, there is none like you in heaven and on earth, and you are God most exalted above all, more powerful over all, and Lord, more, most glorious, most loving. And, O oh God, um, we acknowledge your holiness, and Lord, we, as we approach your, your holy throne, Lord, I pray that you would cleanse us from anything that is not in, in accord with your holy character. And Lord, by your word, reveal to us um, the things in our life that, is, that needs cleansing, and also, Lord, uh, mortifying. Um, tonight, O oh God, we ask you that you would forgive us of every sin that we have committed against you, and Lord, I pray first of all that our, that our church members, O oh Lord, for their spiritual growth, I pray, O God, that you would continually touch, the, the, touch their lives, O oh God, with your word and with your grace so that they would follow you, O oh Lord, in, in, your, in discipleship and follow you, God, in, in, the, in, in what you have told us to be. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, for every services that we have here, may you always be uh, exalted and magnified. May your gospel be always preached in our church. Lord, we pray, Lord, that tonight, even as we have this service for, for our brethren, and some of them are unsaved, uh, who are dealing with cancer, for those who are yet unsaved, we pray, O oh God, for their salvation. We pray, O oh God, for Ines Castellano, Hias Morales, Sister Sonia Basierto, Sister Irene Marcelo, Sister Rina Plantilla, Sister Sarina Villesa, Calma, Joe Villesa, and Roma Falguera, and Roland Fornea, Jan Janet Medidas, uh, Carol Luanco, Cory Esquilo, uh, Susan Mapuyan, Jevelyn Tatel, and Dina, but John Gaia, Lord, as they're dealing with uh, with cancer, I pray, O God, that you would continually touch them, O God, with your healing hand. For those who are dealing with diabetes and kidney problems, we pray, O God, for Sister Mina Padagas, Pumencio Capuras, Brother Tony Ababao, Dr. Redal Palitang, even as he is going to have uh, heart surgery this coming April 26. Lord, we also pray for the doctors, for the good doctors, and also for wisdom that as they would operate on her. For Sister L.B. Gelio Rosa, uh, Pastor Roland Blasa, Jenny Dulay, Brother Leon Cabico, Brother Tuni Chua, Jose Tamunda, and Hilmar Cabico, and Sister Ramona Malapajo, Joli Jocelyn Sumistrado, Grace Tanya Pubustan, Enoch Roncis Valles, Brother Willie Garcia, Pinky Farolan, Sister Sofia Jimenez, Sister Sierra Luntok, Sister Rosa Nyala, we pray God for her recovery from her operation. Sister Joyce Mayuga, Brother Kenneth Stevens, and uh, Andres Raon, and Vicente Aliguro, and Brother Rich Humawan, we pray God for your healing touch on these people's lives. Oh God, we pray for Sister uh, Rosa Pacon as she would be undergo uh, operation this coming. Uh, this coming April, I pray, God, that you would provide for their needs. We pray, oh, Lord, for Ashley Galano, Claire Joy Pasqua, uh, Angeline Poulet, Jamaica Palo, Naomi, Sister Naomi Grace uh, Valencia, Geraldine Villasin, as they would take the board exam this coming May. Lord, for, for Ben Mark Ontalan and uh, Maria Elaine Antonio and Rasil uh, Canelas, as they take this civil engineering board exam this coming April, and Lord, for Rini Catherine Plantilla, and we pray, God, for her salvation also, for May Janet Aquino, uh, and also for Brother Alan Manalo as they take the civil service exam, and also for Sister NTB that, as he takes the civil service board exam. Lord, we thank you for you are a God who answers our, pray our prayers, we thank you, O God, for the souls that got baptized last Sunday. And Lord, we pray for our church continually lead us and guide us with your Holy Spirit that, you, that your word always be the one that would guide each one of us. 
and your Holy Spirit would be always the one who would lead us. And Lord, we pray that in this service, this evening and this coming Sunday, that you will be magnified. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so good evening. Kung sino man po dito ngayon ay mga first-time visitors, pakitas lamang po ng kamay. Meron po ba mga first-time visitors? Kung wala na po, uh, let us ask Brother Mon to come and lead us in singing. Let us all stand and let's greet one another as we sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Please remain standing and get your hymnals and turn to hymn number 252. Hymn number 252, let us sing the song, Higher Ground. On the first verse, ready, sing. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. You may be seated, Paul. Good evening, church, and uh, it's a blessing for us to come together as believers and sons of God and to worship Him as we have a creator who created the world and He deserves all our uh, worship and also our adorations. Uh, without wasting much time, shall we all stand up and open your Bibles with me to the book of John? <clears throat> And we'll be reading from John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Uh, the book of John chapter 1, chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. If you are there, let me hear amen. Follow me with your eyes as I read in verse 1. Is that, and, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked, asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him 
that sent me, while it is the day the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of the spattle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the, with the clay, and said unto him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation saint. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Let us pray. Our God, we do thank you for the hour you have given to us. We know that you created this day for us to come together as daughters and sons of God to praise you and to listen to your word. Father, we pray as we have come here, we are not here to praise anyone. We are not here to praise anybody but to praise only you, God. Use our words and use our um, the words that we are going to hear from the, your word uh, to change the hearts of people here. We pray that you comfort them. And I also pray that, Father, let your Holy Spirit guide me and put word in my mouth so that I'll be able to speak your mind. With all these things, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may now take your seat. The book of John, as we have read, uh, is one of the books that I really like, uh, not because of anything, but because of how uh, John was able to present God, Jesus Christ, to us. Uh, he made us to know that Jesus Christ is God. And whenever we read from the book of John, I get, in, I get encouragement from reading from the book of John. And the verse that we have read from verse chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, uh, we will see how important it is for everyone to have an eye and how important it is not only our physical eye, but also our spiritual eyes. As some people say, uh, the eyes... As the book of uh, Luke says, eyes make us to know that the eyes are the lamp of the body. So whenever we, we take a step, it is our eyes that help us to walk straight and it also helps us to uh, reach wherever we want to reach. The eye is one of the most uh, curious parts of the body. It is most important to extend that when you lost it, you can never replace it again. I don't know, maybe today we have artificial eye that when you lose one side of your eye, you'll be able to put artificial one to see. Uh, I don't have any idea, but what I know is, when you lose your eyesight, it is impossible to be replaced again. And that is how human beings we are. Whenever we, we lose our eyes, we can never find it again. And in, when I start to check on the internet, we have nine types of eyes. Uh, the eyes that we have, we have different, different eyes, but maybe I cannot uh, mention it one by one, but we have nine types of eyes. And these eyes help us to see clearly. But from the account of the book that we have read, we will see that there was a certain man who was born blind. And because of his blindness, he has never seen the, the beauty of the day. He hasn't seen the beauty of the sun, how the light, how some people look like. Every day it seems like he is in his own darkness. And from there we will see how our Lord Jesus Christ was able to have compassion over him. So we are going to look at this marvelous story of how Jesus performed miracles or marvelous miracles in this verse. We will see double miracles that Jesus performed in this man's life. And I believe the testimony of this man will be a song that we have heard so many times. That I, I was once blind, but now... 
I can see. He was a blind and he came to see. He was without hope and he came to believe. And that is the theme of John's gospel. For us to believe on our Lord Jesus Christ because he holds all the power and not only that, he is in the form of, he came in the form of man and he, he is also God. So John presented our Lord Jesus Christ in order for us to know that he is God. The title of my message here is The, Ma the Must Work for God. The Must Work for God. And as we know, my idea is because we have limited time on earth to work for our Lord, we must do it without delay. As we have read from the book, this, our Lord Jesus Christ was going somewhere. Uh, from the account of uh, John chapter 9, we will see that Jesus Christ was telling the people about how true he is or how his words are truth. And because of that, the Jewish people get annoyed and they wanted to stone him. And he even made them to know that at the time of their father, because they are claiming to, claiming to say that Abraham was their father, so Jesus Christ was letting them to know. So we will see from chapter 8, uh, 56, going, we will see that Jesus Christ was letting them to know that even Abraham rejoiced to see his days. And in verse 59, he took, the people took a stone to stone Jesus Christ because they thought Jesus Christ is blas uh, doing blasphemous or he was blaspheming God by the way of presenting himself as God. So after that, Jesus left, and when he was going, uh, the Bible made us to know in verse 1 that, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The first one that I, I would like you to know is the vision of our Lord Jesus Christ. The vision of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible made us to know that when Jesus Christ was going, he saw this blind man. But one thing that we will see here is, it wasn't only Jesus Christ who saw the blind man. His disciples also were able to saw the blind man. But when the disciples saw the blind man, what came within inside their head was to ask question about how that thing or how blindness happened to that man. Jesus Christ saw the man. He didn't ask anything. He was quiet. But when the disciple asked, saw the man, they started to find out how. How did this happen to the man? And they asked Jesus Christ, was it he? Was it his fault? Was, did he do something wrong? Or it's because of his parents' sin? So the disciple wanted to know the one thing. Whose sin caused this man? Was it him, the one who sinned, or the mother? This man and his parents, because... The disciples were like many at this time who believed that when somebody is disabled or when somebody has um, uh, inability to do something, it is either the sin of the baby from the mother's womb or the sin of the parents. So it is two things, maybe when you give birth to the, a daughter or a, a son who is in uh, inability, something like that, something, there is something wrong, wrong with the person, they might thought that maybe the baby did something wrong in the stomach and God punished the baby from the stomach before. And uh, this happened in the life of 
Job, we will know that when Job was afflicted, the three friends, uh, the Eliphaz, the Bildad, the Zophar, when they visited Job, they were also accusing Job because Job was afflicted. And because of his pain and affliction, they, uh, they told Job, Job, you must be a horrible sinner for God to cause such suffering to come to you. Maybe you have done something wrong that you need to plead on behalf of <clears throat> yourself, on behalf of God, for God to forgive you because of your pains and because of the things that you are going in. So that has been a concept or the mindset of the Jewish people. I mean, some people say it is a theology of Jewish people. But if that was a theology of Jewish people, then it was very bad theology. Because there is no way that God afflict or God uh, punish somebody because of his blind eyes or because of his inability to do something. And the baby who has not yet been born, God will punish the baby from the stomach. And the Bible made us also to know that God does not punish anyone because of the sins of the parents. So we carry our own sin. My mother doesn't carry my sin for me, or my mother, I'm not suffering because of the things that my mom de uh, did. We are all sinners. So because of that, the people were asking questions, and one thing that we will see here is the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. How Jesus Christ answered their question uh, from chapter 3. He said, Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. Let us turn our Bibles to John chapter 11 and read something from there. John 11. John 11, let us start from the death of uh, Lazarus, uh, from four, is that when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified therein. He said, now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So every situation, every point that we find ourselves, we need to know that in that situation, God's glory can be found there. In the situation we find ourselves, God has not dejected those people. God not, has not dejected them. But still, the glory of God can be shown to those people, can be found in those people. So the glory of God, God made us to know this baby was in that position in order for glory of God to be on him. And the disciple had this common view that it was an old philosophy that the, that, that the man did something wrong. So they asked their curiosity question, and Jesus answered them with a compassion. So the thing we will see here is that Jesus Christ saw a man, but the disciples asked question about the man. Jesus Christ saw somebody, but the disciples, instead of them to also see, they ask question about him. The disciples, to the disciples, the blind man was the occasion for theological speculations. But to the Jesus Christ, he was a human being to be pitied and helped. So we will see the hope that Jesus Christ brought to the humanity. It doesn't matter how woeful sin that we have committed. If we take initiative, the glory of God will manifest in our lives. And God's glory manifests through his son, Jesus Christ. So that is the vision of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are going to ask ourselves today, how do we also see things? Do we see people and just ask questions about, about those people? Or we see people and have compassion for those people? Jesus Christ saw him 
And instead of asking how the disease came over, he took an initiative to help the man. The man didn't call Jesus Christ. He wasn't the one who called for his blindness to be open, but God saw the man. So you and I need to vision, need to look around in order for us to show help to people. And our help to those people will not be like a material things. It is good if you have a material things to give. But the most important thing that we need to share or we need to help is to give them the word of God. So the question reflects the normal thing that today we also go in. When our mothers give birth to somebody who is not uh, able to walk, we ask questions, well, why did these things happen? Instead of asking ourselves, what can we do to help the person, we ask, how does these things happen? And it didn't stop there. If we read from the whole book of John, we will see that after the Jesus Christ made the miracles to the man, the Jewish people was also asking how, 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 so many times in the Bible, asking how did you get, uh, receive your uh, eyes? How did you get perfect again? So it was only how, how, how. But rejecting that there is God who can make difficult things more easy and impossible things more possible. This man was blind and God was able to cure this man. The next one that I would like you to see is the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. The mission of our Lord Jesus Christ are from verse 4 to 9. He said, I must... I must work the works of him that sent me while it is, it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I live in the world, I am the light of the world. So here we will see the vis- uh, mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will see that his mission was the necessity or the necessity of Christ's mission, meaning his mission was very urgent. He said, I must work the works of him who sent me. While it is the day that night cometh, when no man can work again. So Christ felt the necessity of his work. It was on Sabbath day at that time on which works of necessity must not be done, but Christ proved them that the work of God is more necessary than the Sabbath. God the Father sent his only son to do a specific work which was assigned to him. Jesus did not come down to do his whatever he wants. He came to do the Father's work with a specific time at a specific place, which is the earth. Christ's atoning work was planned, and he was sent and given a specific time to accomplish it and go back to where he came from. So his work is very urgent, and he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. He could have said, maybe I will do it. He could have said, or maybe if I get somebody to escort me, I will go out and do the work. Christ could have said, maybe let me wait, maybe some few time I will be able to do that. But Jesus Christ knew exactly the mandate that he has been given to accomplish it. As believers, do we knew, do we know our mandate that we need to accomplish it as the whole church do we knew, uh, know our mission on this earth you know in the church we have a lot of responsibilities but we have only one mission to accomplish is to go out 
and preach the gospel to people in order for those people to come in and worship God. We know that God created us for his glory, for us to worship him. But how can we worship whereby we don't know God? By the way, we need to go out, witness to them in order for them to come in and worship God. So Christ gave us the details of his work. And he began with who must work. Let's ask ourselves, who must work the work of God? And he said, I. In other translations, they translated it, we. But in King James, it is I. Why? Because the task that was given to God, it was only God who can accomplish that task. There is no one on earth who can work for God at that moment and die for our sins. Because the, the, the works of God was for him to go to the cross to die for us. So it was a specific task that only Christ Jesus can, uh, can only Jesus Christ can hold it at his back. It was only him who can hold it at his back. But when we also read from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 21, and the Bible made us to know that Jesus Christ said, as my father has sent me, so ye I sent you. So the task, the task, Jesus Christ uh, presented it to make us to be also be obligated to be responsible uh, for the task also, meaning we are not going to die for people, but we are going to do the works of God. And he made us to know it wasn't only one work. He said, we should, I must work the works of God. It was in plural form. By the way, of, it's not only one work that we need to do as a believers. And the most important one or the most one that we need to focus on is to how people will get saved. We can do everything in the church, but if we are not stepping out to sp share the, the gospel to people, then we are getting it wrong. We are not only praising and worshiping here to rejoice, but we want other people to also hear the gospel. He said... I must work the works of God. And the one thing that we must know here is the word must coordinate or coordinate with a divine agency or necessity. It is a must thing that we don't need to re re reject or we don't need to put it somewhere, sad line or something like that. It is the must thing because Jesus Christ at that time was going to die to save people, to save people like you and I. So his focus was to die to save people. And you and I, our focus is what? What is our must work? Our must work is to go out and share the gospel. We will see another one, hot. What to do? He said, work the works of God or of him. That is only one that we are working for. We are not working for individual or we are not working for some people on earth. We are working for only one and true God, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. He said to work and work and work and work and work without stopping until the time we will die. The next one is whom to work for. Our Lord Jesus Christ made mention here, we need to work for, he was working for God the Father. God the Father. The him there is God the Father. So his work was for God the Father. And we will know that when he came, his message, all about the kingdom of God. My father, my father. Let's open our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. Our Lord Jesus Christ started from there. Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. <clears throat> He said, and he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be able 
I must be about my father's business. You see, he also made mention of must. Here, he also made mention of must. So there was only one person or only one God, the Father, that Jesus Christ was working for. And he made mention here, when to work. What, are, what is the time or when do we need to do this work? In verse number, uh, verse number four, B, he said, while it is the day, the night cometh when no man can work. So the time that you and I, we need to work is the time that we have life. The time you and I, we need to work for God is the time that is, is the day in our life. Because the night will definitely go to come where no one can work for God. This is our time that we need to make a meaningful use of it. By the way of devoted ourselves to work for God. So let's ask ourselves a question. Have somebody offended you in such a way that you think, I cannot work anymore for God? Have anything happened to you to the point that you cannot put it aside and focus on whom that you are working for? Let's ask ourselves and answer that question in ourselves. Because we are not working for anyone, and definitely as we are human beings, somebody might offend you. How do you take offense when somebody offends you? How do you still say that, oh, even though somebody has offended me, but I, will, I must still do the works of God? That is what's needed. And it makes us to know that our work, we are not doing for somebody, but we are doing for God. And we will see also here how to work. And the, the way we need to work is the, by the way of preaching the gospel. In verse 5, he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. There is only one light who is Christ Jesus. We are not light. We are the witness of the light. When we go to John chapter 1, <clears throat> John chapter 1, <clears throat> John chapter 1, verse 6, let's start from there. It said, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came from the witness, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was not in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew, knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own rejected, rejected him. You see, we are the witness of the light. So the, by the way of us to witness or to show our light, as the Bible made us to know, we need to let our light shine. There's no one who lighted a candle and put it under his bed. He put it on the candlestick in order for the light to shine. So if we bear witness of the light, or if the light is in him, is with us, inside of us, then we need to also make it known. We don't need to keep it ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, uh, verse let, let's go there, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse, verse 13. Paul said, We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. So if we believe that there is light in us, and there is only one light who can save the world, then we need to speak the light. We need to make the world know the light. We need to let people come to the light. We need to send the light to the people in order for their blindness to be open. That is the mission of us. That is the mandate of the church. 
We need to come together to glorify God, but we need to go outside to let people come in to also glorify God. That is the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's proceed to the next one. The next one is the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this miracle, Jesus took all the initiative. Jesus came to the blind man. The blind man did not come to Jesus Christ. Even so, he expected the blind man to respond with faith filled with action. His healing would not happen unless the man responded with obedient action. And from 6, we will see here, verse 6 to 7, he said, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of spattle, and he anointed the eye of the blind, blind man with a clay. And he said unto him, Go and wash in the pool of Sarah, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. So this man, somebody said, he obeyed Jesus Christ blindly. He didn't want, or he didn't wait for his eyes to be opened before he obeyed Jesus Christ. And that is how it is in human life. We don't need to know everything about Christ before we will say, God, I believe in you. Our obedience and faith matters. And that is how we can come to Christ. This man didn't know anything. When you read from the, the subsequent verses, we will see that even when they were asking him questions, he said, I don't know where he is, but the one thing that I know, that he is God and Savior. That is what you and I, we need to learn. That is what we need to let people to know. That it is only God who can create new life in us. It is only Jesus Christ who can make our blindness to go. And we don't need to keep it to ourselves. How unfortunate it is for someone to spit on a mud to rob an eye. But this man was very attentive and focused on the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Maybe somebody might ask, why did Jesus Christ use mud? He is part on the mud or on the ground and he uses. It also takes us to the book of Genesis, how God created human beings. He used the dust to create human beings. So what Jesus Christ did there make us to know that he is God. He used the mud to make another eye or to create a different eye for this man. This man was able to see because when you lose your sight, there is no way you can find it. And God dem uh, demonstrated it that he is the Lord who used mud or who used clay to create human beings. And because of that, he knew exactly what he he's supposed to do to make this man see again. So the obedience steps that hearkens to the voice of God will eventually make the person clean and it will open the eyes of this man. We will also see the believing faith that sees Christ as God and Savior and that one we need to read from verse 38 and 30, 31. Verse 31 and 38. <clears throat> Verse 31, he says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be worshipper of God and do what his will, him he heareth. So this man know exactly that the one who made, us to, made him to see is God. You know, in the book, when you read, at first when they asked him, he said, he is a prophet. But later, he realized to know that this man wasn't a prophet. And this man, it wasn't only his physical blindness. When you read it to the end of the book, you will see that his spiritual blindness was also open. In verse 35, Jesus heard that they cast him out 
And when he had found him, he said unto him, Do where thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? His believing faith was about to exercise, or he was ready to exercise his believing faith. In verse 37, he says, at verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Immediately that he believed, he worshipped. So you see the, the, the mandate of the church. We need to let the people know, and immediately that they will know, they will bow down to God. We, they cannot bow down to God whilst they are still living in their blindness. Whilst, whilst they are still living in their sin. They will know it by the way of when we send the light to them. That is why after the, uh, the, the Pentecost, they didn't stay only one place, but they go out and win more souls every day and every day and every day for, for God. That is one thing that we need to see. We will worship God, but when it is time for us to go out, church, let us do our best to go out and share to the people outside. That is the mandate and the one thing that the church of nowadays are losing sight of. Many churches don't want to go out and witness to people. And many churches seem not to know the mission that they have on earth. It is good that this church know the mission of believers. And because of that, they support a lot of missionaries. And because of that, we do as much of our best to go out and share the gospel. But that is not enough. We need to keep on doing, and we need to involve ourselves. We need to be devoted ourselves to go out and share the gospel. So he believed with his heart, confessed with his mouth, for he was blind. But now see. Jesus said, I came for those who seem not might. I came for those which seem not might see, and they that see might blind. So God came to those who seem not to see or who cannot see. But anyone who will say that, oh, I can see, I can see you will be still in your sin. True faith will show itself in a humble adoration of the Lord Jesus. Those who believe in him will see all reason to worship him. And that is what the blind man did. Immediately he believed, he saw how it is important to worship God. The blind man became the constant follower of Christ. He was even the one who was witnessing to the Jews. That is how it is. The more we share, I will also share. Somebody will also share. Somebody. Then it goes. So for our application, we must know that life on earth is, is the good opportunity we have to share the gospel. Jesus Christ knew exactly the opportunity that he had. He knew that there will be a time he will, left on, he will left this earth. There will be a time there will be no more for him. His job will be finished. That is why on the cross he said, it is done. The job has been finished. You and I, can we say it is done? Or when we meet our creator, can we say it is done to him? Because we didn't partake in the, in the job that he gave to us. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 18, and he made us to know we should go. What are we doing? Are we going? We don't need to know everything about Christ, but one thing we need to know is he is God and a Savior. He is God and our Savior. That is the only thing that we know. And when we know that, you will be able to worship him you will be able to take initiative to share the gospel. We must know that the world will cast us out, 
since we believe in Christ, but he is always there to find out, to find us. That is what happened to the, to, uh, the guy, the blind guy. Immediately the Jewish people heard that this guy is believing on Jesus Christ. They cast him out from the temple. But glory be to God that God was able to find this man. You know, people who say many things about us, people who speak ill about us, but always remember that God is there to find you. God is there to support you. God is there to uphold you. We are not walking alone. We are with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the, the must work for us as a church. That we don't need to close our eyes on it. We don't need to say that, oh, I'm doing this thing. So that is the only job I can do here. We need to get ourselves involved and go out and share the gospel. The empty seat is an opportunity for us to share the gospel more. Whenever the, the, the place is empty, then we need to do more in order for people to come in. But ask yourself, what is seizing you? What is blocking you to share the gospel? Ask yourself, even at the starting of this year, how many times have you shared the gospel? How many people have you shared the gospel to? And how many people have you led them to Christ? It is a question that we need to answer ourselves. From the starting of this year, how many people we have take an initiative to share the gospel to? The must job that you and I, we need to do. Shall we all stand? Our God, we do thank you for what we have learned. We do thank you for revealing yourself to us. And we pray that you will let us to know the must work that we need to do. We need to put everything aside and focus on you in order to share the gospel for people to also know you. That is the mandate you gave it to the church. And that is the great commission that we need to fulfill. But without our strength, Father, we cannot fulfill it. Without our might and power, we will lose. Father, we pray that you come and strength, you strengthen us and you motivate us more and more for us to go and share it. With all these things, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Moon. Um, you, may, you, may, you may be seated, but let us call our ushers for our offering. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for the message that uh, has been uh, delivered by uh, Brother Anton. And Lord, as we have this offering, please bless the gift and the giver as we use this offering to supply the needs of this church for the furtherance of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now for our closing song, may I request everyone to please stand and get your hymn books and turn to page 252. We will again sing the song, Higher Ground. We will sing the last verse. On the fourth verse, ready, sing. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright but still i pray till have i found lord let me on to higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand 
by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you all. You are dismissed.